We are so happy to have you watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. And you know, I want to talk with you just a brief moment about maybe some rejection issues. I remember when I was growing up, with my last name being Hickey, uh, I had some rejection issues, <laughs> you can imagine. And uh, those were tough things. I remember coming home one time and, well, multiple times and telling my dad, nobody likes me, you know, coming home from school. Nobody likes me. Everybody thinks I'm, I'm a jerk, I'm a dork, I'm a geek, all this stuff. And rejection, everybody, everybody deals with rejection, whether it's rejection at work, whether it's rejection from a boyfriend or a girlfriend, rejection from a mate, rejection from your children. All of us deal with rejection. In fact, if you're ever wondering about rejection, there's a download that you can get on the website now and take a, a rejection test and, and kind of walk you through some questions with that. It's a tr great, tremendous resource to help you with that. But we're going to be ministering today on rejection. Mom's going to be teaching on this. But before we jump into her teaching, I want to encourage you that you need to call and ask for prayer. Pray and ask the person on the other line, pray for me. I'm, I've, I'm dealing with rejection. And, you know, rejection uh, shows up in lots of different ways. Shows up in the way we do our relationships. Shows up in the way we behave sometimes at work. Shows up in our school actions, our school behaviors. Shows up all over the place. And God wants to help you with rejection. So get on the phone. Say, pray for me. I have rejection issues. We don't, we're not going to go into counseling or long details with you because we're just here to pray for you. But if you can't get to, the web, or get to the phone, then you can leave a prayer request on the website because we like to pray for you. And the truth of it is we see God do tremendous miracles through prayer. And so hop on the phone, get on the website, and give us the privilege and the honor of praying for you. And partners, thank you, thank you, thank you for connecting with us and being such a tremendous support in both finances as well as in prayer. We appreciate you. Couldn't do what we do today without you. Thank you so much. I prayed for you this morning, and I know God is really working and moving in your life. And in just a few moments here, we're going to be joining a teaching that my mom has done now on rejection. And I love this teaching because flat out, it's from the Word of God. And whenever you have the Word of God, that's when you begin to see miracles become unlocked. Because as you live the Word, you unlock the miraculous. So I just encourage you, watch now, put your remote control down, let's settle back, let's relax, and let's hear what God wants to speak to you today about rejection to not only set you free, but also to heal and redeem you today. Tonight is a very important night because I, I know this sermon, this word fits everyone here. It fits everyone. Because everyone experiences rejection. But what I see in the Bible, we are not absolutely to keep it and hold on to it. We are to be free. So you can identify tonight you have rejection, but you must identify with what Jesus has done that he took your rejection for you. So first of all, I want you to look at this test. And if you're watching on television, you can download it because uh, this is just going to check you out. So there are 14 things here I want you to look at. Just look at very quickly and answer yes or no. Nobody's going to check it. Nobody's going to look for it. This is between you and God. But do you anticipate or elicit, elicit a negative response from others? Okay. When questioned, do I become agitated or angry? Do I need to be considered an expert on almost everything? Am I known for being argumentative? Do I believe that I'm on a higher spiritual plane and that my opinion should be favored above others? I'm sure you're checking wherever you are. Uh, do I experience marked mood swings? Thank God I can say no to that. Hallelujah. Do I do things merely to gain the acceptance or attention of others? Have people told me that I'm overly sensitive in my mood, often dictated by the moods of those around me? Do I overvalue the positive evaluation by others? Ugh. Do I expect to be overlooked? Do I require special encouragement to participate in anything? Don't forget to download this now. Do leaders consider me inconsistent or unreliable? Do I seldom attend a Bible study, social event, party, or blend in with others because I see myself as different? Do I measure my personal value by the amount of spiritual insight I have? So check yes, check no, and you kind of 
get the picture identity of where you can see rejection working in your life. Now, when I started these, I thought, oh God, don't let all 14 be yes. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm sure you didn't have all 14 as yes, but it helps you to see where is rejection working in my life. Now, rejection strikes everyone, no question. And basically, it's a victim mentality. So when you say, well, you know, I feel rejected in this situation, uh, it's a victim mentality. I'm a victim of this environment. I'm a victim of this circumstance. And I thought rejection is looking through dark glasses at everything. Now, I don't need dark glasses in here. And, you know, I use dark glasses when it's real bright and sunny, especially if I'm driving and the sun is in my eyes. But if you wear dark glasses all the time and you're always feeling rejected, wow, that's a bad situation. So we tonight, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, are going to take off dark glasses. Amen? And if you're watching on television, you're going to get your dark glasses off because Jesus came to set the captive free. Now, these scriptures are very important because they talk about your spirit. And you are a threefold being tonight. You are spirit, soul, and body. And often we will take care of the body. We'll do a lot of things for our body, make it look good, smell good, use deodorant, take a bath, hopefully, or shower, you know. And we want to be presentable. Uh, we'll exercise. We'll try to eat proper things. We'll drink water, all these things, because we want to take care of our body. But we also have a soul, which has to do with our mind and our emotions and our will. And so we like to read. We want to develop our minds. You know, there are certain things we like to think about. Uh, and we have emotions, no question. Emotions can be good, but they can also sometimes lead us into bad circumstances. So we recognize, I, I must take care of my soul. I must develop my mind. I must work with my emotions. I don't want my emotions to go in mood swings and go wrong ways. But I believe our spirit man is so important. And when the spirit man gets wounded, and this is where rejection is, then it can be such a serious problem. So we're not just making identities, we're getting free. Everybody say, getting free. So I want you to stand up. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit brings this message into you and the anointing of the Holy Spirit tonight breaks bondages of rejection in your life. So put your hand on your heart and pray out loud with me. Say, Father, I want to hear your voice. I want the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to me. And I want to be free. I don't want to walk in rejection. I don't want to look at life with dark glasses and people and circumstances with dark glasses. And in Jesus' name, I'm going to receive what the cross provided for me. Amen. Amen. You can be set, uh, seated. You can be set free. The Word will set you free. Now, I gave you some scriptures here. Proverbs 18, 14. The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? So, you know, you can be real sick, but if your spirit man can stay strong some way, though you may have physical pain and all kinds of things going on in your body that don't work properly, but your spirit is strong. So you'll keep believing God. You'll keep in a right attitude. So your spirit is very key in these weak times. But a broken spirit and rejection is really a broken spirit. And so it says, oh, you know that, you can't bear it. And so tonight, we shouldn't be bearing and putting up with rejection because it breaks our spirit. And we need a strong spirit all of our life. Is that true? And then I put another one down here. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. My goodness. The Bible says if you can rule your spirit, you can have your spirit strong and not just wavering and broken, that you're greater than somebody who could go in and conquer a city. Wow. I mean, that's quite a contrast that if I can have a strong spirit and keep my spirit where it should be with God and let God rule and reign spirit, soul, and body, I'm greater than somebody who goes out and conquers a whole city. I'm greater than Alexander the Great. 
you say you're getting too far out. Okay. Now, I put something here. Our struggle is not against people. And this is where we get into rejection. Oh, it's people are the problem. But our struggle is against evil. And so we need to see what is the real problem when people reject me, don't like me, I get in circumstances. Uh, what is the real problem here? The problem is evil, not the people themselves. And don't look at the storm. See the God of the storm so that he can, in this, make you strong, bring you through, and use people, even negative people, even people who reject you, to be a blessing. Now I'm going to ask you a very personal question. How many of you ever rejected anyone? Put your hand up. Some of you, you're lying all over the place. <laughs> we have all rejected, so we've got a two-way street here. We get rejected, and we also give rejection. And so both of these areas we need to look at and let God speak to us and let the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Word, set us free. Amen? We shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. to go to Johannesburg, South Africa with Sarah and me for the most blessed time of your life to minister. It will be so awesome, and you can get your brochure today. Is that right? That's right. Call or get on the website for the information. And we have an additional opportunity, yes. Mom, uh, for an excursion to Cape Town to see a safari as well as Robbins Island where Nelson Mandela was. Um, absolutely amazing things that are in Cape Town, that's an additional excursion. But the primary thing we want to encourage you with here is our ministry opportunities in Johannesburg. We're going to be ministering at nighttime as well as a Saving Moses opportunity. This is a life-changing trip, and you don't want to miss out. Mom, how can they come? They can come and get the brochure, but you could also scholarship someone to go. And a group of you could get together and scholarship your pastor and totally bless him and change his life. We want to hear from you today. So first of all, we're identifying with the test and those of you downloading it, you're identifying where rejection is working in your life, but you're also going to identify that Jesus set you free from any of those areas that you checked yes on. Okay, let's look at it. Let's see how rejection worked in Joseph's life. And let's see how rejection worked in Saul's life and the difference. Because no question, Joseph was rejected. He was rejected because we'd say, well, you know, the way he treated his brothers, telling them that dream, it made them jealous. He's young, kind of smart aleck. So his brothers rejected him. But man, they took rejection so far they sold him into slavery. That is big rejection. And personally, I have found a lot of rejection that I have felt is vain imagination. Now, there's some that's for real, but a lot of it, you just imagine it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so we're going to have to be careful what is imaginary and what is real. Joseph's was real. His brothers, so jealous of him, sold him into slavery. So he's got a big family rejection problem. Big. Then he gets in Potiphar's house, works very hard, does the right things. Potiphar's wife tries to seduce him, lies about him, and Potiphar rejects him, and it's not his fault. So some rejection you kind of set yourself up for, and it goes too far. Some rejection is not fair. 
people judge you and reject you for things you really haven't done, haven't thought, haven't been a part of. But there is that kind of rejection too. And then when he's thrown in prison and he interprets the dreams to those two prisoners, you know, he tells the one prisoner, remember me because you're going to be restored to the Pharaoh. (laughs) And he doesn't remember him. He forgets him. So another instant of rejection. And yet Joseph, and it tells you that the word tried him. You are tried in these things. Will you put your confidence in the God of the storm? Or are you just going to look at the storm? Joseph came out smelling like a rose. I mean, he became the administrator for a whole nation. That's not shabby. And Egypt, wow, that was a big thing. And then, you know, his brothers are restored to him and his family moves down there. He saves them, saves the family that will produce the Messiah. So I said, God, how did he handle it? Boy, for family rejection, you know, and then to be rejected for something that you really didn't do wrong, falsely accused. Then you try to help somebody in prison. They forget you. And yet he comes out okay. And so I thought, I'm going to check it out. What did he do in his rejection times? And I didn't see what he said when his brothers rejected him, except he pled with them not to do what they were doing. But when he was in Potiphar's household and Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him, he said to her, because I know what people are like by what they say. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so he said to her, you know, I can't do this. I I can't sin against my master and I can't sin against God. He talked to the woman who was trying to seduce him about God. Okay? Then in the prison, when they came to him and said, we hear you interpret dreams, he said, God interprets dreams. So what did he talk about in prison? What did he talk about in his rejected place? He talked about God, not who's mistreating me, but God. Okay? And then when he came before the Pharaoh, wow, biggest opportunity you could have. And Pharaoh had these two dreams, and he didn't say, oh, I can really interpret dreams. He says, God interprets dreams. And then at the very end with his brothers, you know, they said, "Uh, well, are you going to kill us? He said, no, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. So in your timing of your, what can I say, people rejecting you, what do you need to talk about? Don't talk about how horrible everybody is, but what do you talk about? God. So what you're saying is very key. Rejection. You know, I think jealousy, rejection, a lot of these things go along together. And uh, I remember when Wally and I were first married, we had a second floor apartment and our car wouldn't start. And I was teaching school. We need to be on time. And there was a couple across the street we had met. They were Christians. So Wally said, well, I'm going to go across the street and ask him if he'll help me start the car. So he goes across the street and asks the guy to help him start the car, and he helps him, and he comes in. Oh, the car started. He said, you know, that man has the most beautiful wife. I thought, what's he looking at her for? He's got me, and of course, I haven't been married very long. Not real secure. So then, you know, several weeks later, the car wouldn't start, and I thought, don't go over there. But he went. I didn't tell him not to. He went. And he came home again and said, wow, he has the most beautiful wife. And it really got to me. And I began to watch him. If he said any woman was attracted or he looked at a woman very long, man, I was just so upset. I just felt like he was rejecting me. So he just told me one day, he said, Marilyn, he said, you know, you got a spirit on you and it's from the devil. I'm going to cast it out of you. He said, I'm not looking for women. I married you. What's your problem? And so he dealt with. So it's good when we don't just put up with it and nurse it and feed it, but identify it and let, thank God, Wally identified it with me. (laughs) He said he cast a spirit of jealousy out of me. Now, I don't really think it was that bad. (laughs) But anyway, I got over it. (laughs) I was free. Let's look at Saul. Saul in his rejection. And that's why I want you to see imaginary tonight. And that's why I want the Holy Spirit to really talk to you and help you tonight to identify with what Jesus has done for you. If I look at Saul, 
My, he was anointed to be a king. Tremendous prophetic words over him. But he wanted to be accepted by people. Mm. And so when Samuel doesn't show up in time for the sacrifice, he steps in and takes the place of Samuel and makes a sacrifice. And God was very displeased with him. Why did he do this? Because he wanted to be accepted by people more than he wanted to be accepted by God. And that's where rejection can be very key to us because we want people to like us, but sometimes they don't like us because of our lifestyle. Now, I find, and you know, with different Christians, a lot of times different lifestyles, but I had a pastor call me one time, and he said to me, I suppose you don't drink. I said, I suppose you're right. He said, it's just that religious area of your life, too religious. Well, I wanted him to like me, but I didn't say, I'm going to go drink with you. I didn't do it. Because, folks, God had already dealt with me about my lifestyle. I had to be accepted by God more than I wanted to be accepted by that pastor. And at that time, he was critical of me. But today, he invited me to come and speak in this church. Oh, isn't God something? So Saul stepped out of the place, wanting the acceptance of people more than the acceptance of God, and it went downhill, downhill. You know, and God rejects him when he rejected God because he wanted the acceptance of people. God rejected him. And eventually, he had such vain imaginations about David and totally vain imagination that he came to the place he tried to murder him and then he went to demonic spirits to get direction for his life. And where did it start? If you had said that to him at the beginning, Oh, Saul, you know, you're going to be a great king, but be careful with rejection. Don't get into that, because if you do, be careful that you don't reject God and you accept want the acceptance of people more, because it will lead you to lose your kingdom, to be a suicide, and to go to a witch for direction. We say, oh, I'd never go that far. So remember, rejection is a process and can take you someplace you don't want you to go. That's why Jesus has made such a wonderful provision. I talked to a young man a week ago, not in our church, and he's, I think, 34 years old, and he's very open with me, and he said, I'm a drug addict. He said, I have been for 10 years. And he said, uh, you know, I know I need to be free, but I just don't want to be wanted enough to do anything about it. He said, I, I don't think it's a major problem, but I think 10 years as a drug addict is a major problem. I think one month could lead to something. And so I said to him, because I invited him to our Celebrate Recovery, I invited him to go to AA, but I know a medical doctor who really helps drug addicts and alcoholics. So I gave him the phone number of this medical doctor. So I called the doctor and said to him, I'm recommending some drug addicts to come to you. He said, that's wonderful, because he said, God told me that I have an anointing to set captives free. And he said, I am having more and more patients come. And he said, really, I'm seeing them set free. But he said, if he doesn't get free, he said he'll probably die in his mid-40s. Now, see, nobody thinks it's going to lead them that far. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so I don't think Saul ever thought, Oh, I will end up a suicide. I don't think he thought that. But that feeling of wanting the acceptance of people more than the acceptance of God led him to that point. So that's why I'm saying tonight, this is a very serious service. It's a very wonderful service because you're going to get what? What are you going to get? Free, absolutely. Emotional issues are so challenging. You can have struggles with depression. You can have struggles with fear, anxiety, frustration, worry. There's all kinds. There's a whole spectrum of emotional issues that challenge us and that we have to deal with. And I want to encourage you today that you do not have to be controlled by your emotions, that God can absolutely come and bring peace into your heart, can bring uh, uh, joy where there's been depression, can bring uh, serenity where there's been anxiety. God can absolutely replace all of the negative stuff and replace it with who He is and what He does, the fruit of the Spirit. 
I want to encourage you, get on the phone right now. Call because we want to pray for you that God will help you with your emotions, not to be controlled by them, but to see his power overcome and also replace, to replace the bad with the good. So get on the phone or get on the website. And I want to encourage you with this. Remember that David always said, why so downcast? Oh, my soul, put your trust in God. And so many times I've said that to myself, Sarah, why are you upset? Why are you discouraged? Why are you nervous? Why are you frustrated? Why are you afraid? And sometimes we get afraid of the future. We get fearful of this situation. We get nervous about this. We worry about what hasn't happened, all kinds of things. But I want to encourage you today that God says to you, why so downcast? Oh, my soul, put your trust in God. And you and I both know that trusting in God is the best solution, the best solution for emotional struggle. So I encourage you today, get on the phone. Let us pray for you. Let us pray for those emotional needs that you have. If you can't get to the phone, then get on the website. We want to pray for you to see God turn what's been a struggle, what's been a difficulty, what's been a hardship, even what's been a failure for you in your emotional life. Turn that into his victory, into his peace, into his joy, into his strength, into his power. So let us pray for you. It's a tremendous privilege and an honor and a transformation for you even today. Emotional suffering can take many forms. Some people battle fear. Others carry the wounds of emotional abuse, grief, rejection, disappointment, betrayal, and even abandonment. But here's the amazing news. Jesus provided for healing and wholeness in our emotions on the cross, just as he provided for our physical healing. You just have to know how to appropriate it. Mom has a teaching that really unpacks this truth in a clear and powerful way. It is called wholehearted and for a limited time, it is our thank you gift to you for your gift of any amount to this ministry. Here's more information on how to share a gift and receive this great resource in your life for healing emotions. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. These powerful words are found in Isaiah 53 and make it clear that Jesus' redeeming healing work on the cross included healing for our emotions. For a limited time, you can receive Marilyn's teaching on healing for your emotions as our special thank you for sharing a gift of any size. It will help you understand how to appropriate healing for your emotions and to walk in wholeness and peace. But if you can share a seed gift of $53 or more in support of the outreaches of Marilyn Hickey Ministries, we want to send you a powerful bundle of resources. We're calling our First Aid Kit for Your Emotions. This kit includes the powerful soft cover book, God's Prescription for a Hurting Heart. The two CD set titled Wholehearted, Keys for Emotional Healing and Prosperity for Your Soul, plus a bottle of anointing oil for your ministering this kind of healing to yourself and to those you love. Sow an Isaiah 53 seed gift right now and receive your own first aid kit for your emotions. Call or click right now. Share online at marilynandsarah.org. Walk in wholeness in your emotions and prosperity in your soul. Call today. 